Resources. I'm the coordinator of this event tonight. I'm a retired garbage educator. I love talking trash. <laughs> I want to thank the Omni Center for co-sponsoring this event with me, and I also want to give a round of applause first to Will, our tech guy. To Fran Alexander, Leslie King, Robert McAfee, Gladys Tiffany, and Beth Barham for setting out the food tonight. Okay. We're going to begin our program tonight with Blue Brashear, and she's going to introduce herself. Let's give Blue a round of applause. My name is Blue Brazier, and I am very passionate about ocean pollution. Last year, I created a student art show and music presentation called the Blue Earth to spread awareness about this problem. That art, created by students all across the country, is up on the walls right now. And there's an order sheet right there if anyone wants to order art for $55 each. So I'm so honored to be able to work with Louise Mann, and I'm so happy to continue sharing the problems of plastic. When I started this project, I was really surprised by how many people thought that because we lived in Arkansas, we don't affect the problem, because we don't live near the ocean. But really, all our land and all our water is connected, and we really do affect the problem. Plastic is everywhere. It's in toys, appliances, packaging, and stuff you wouldn't even think of, like soap and toothpaste. The average American family throws away 185 pounds of plastic per year, and only 5% of that is recovered. The other 95% is discarded and ends up in our water. And plastics are not biodegradable, which means they don't break down, they don't decompose, they just break into tinier and tinier pieces. To give you a visual of that, plastic from a one liter bottle could end up on every mile of every beach across the whole world. One bottle. And all kinds of animals get stuck in this or mistake it for food and they eat it and even if they're lucky enough not to do that, there's no way they won't ingest it because of how tiny of pieces it breaks down into. One million seabirds and 100,000 marine animals die each year because of plastic pollution. <coughs> and if that doesn't hit you hard enough, it also affects humans. There are many toxicities in plastic, including lead, mercury, and a lot of other chemicals. And people age six and up tested positive for a chemical called BPA, which is directly correlated with breast cancer, heart disease, infertility, obesity, and it disrupts a gene in child development. And we get this when we eat fish who have consumed the plastic or even just in the packaging of our foods. But it's okay because we can make a difference. This problem has a solution. It isn't just there, it's something that we can change. So we can come together with small steps to actually change the world. So I'm so happy you guys all came out here and to learn different steps we can all take to make change. Diana and Elizabeth here with us tonight, and I'm sorry, Blue, I forgot they were supposed to go in front of Blue, but here they are now. Let's do it up for Diana. Got mine. You talk about the song. I'm going to quickly just point out the trash that I'm going to make my music with. Supplement, sports supplement bottle. And these nasty things they sell at Walmart and stores like that with balloons on the end. You buy these one time, you hook it to the hose, you blow up a hundred balloons and then throw it away. What's the problem? So these are <laughs> you'll see them used properly this evening. <laughs> so, I didn't buy them, I found them in the trash. <laughs> So we're grateful to be invited uh, tonight and uh, really proud of Blue's work and Louise Mann. Thank you for inviting us. Um, I wrote uh, this song several years ago after going to a university program and learning about plastics in the ocean and the five gyres. Um, and so when I started reading, uh, reading about the common plastics like Blue mentioned in our environment, the everyday products that we buy, food packaging, 
So polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, polyvinyl chloride, which we are familiar with as PVC. And so, and uh, also about uh, more specific chemicals um, that are added as plasticizers to make it bend, to make it make plastic moldable so that we can carry um, our Lunchables in them. And, you, and, and uh, little bits of things. And so the plasticizers that are added are often um, much more toxic than the plastic itself. And so that's one reason that we're really glad to be here today and to sing you this song. <coughs> Recovery. 
<laughs> Take a look at my toxicity if you really want to see. Pay attention to me if you really want to see. Pay attention to me. love of turtles and a need for a little adventure resulted in a two-month stay in Maui. She, I've been telling people she helped birth the sea turtles and she corrected me and said, Louise, I was not a midwife. <laughs> but what she did do is she helped those little baby sea turtles after they came out of the sand. She helped build little sand mounds to get them to the ocean. So she's going to tell us about that. And while she was in Hawaii, Anna was struck by how seriously that culture attacked plastic waste. Let's give Anna a warm welcome. Hi everyone. I kind of need a box to stand on or something. <laughs> All right. So today I'm going to talk to you about how you can help sea turtles and why you should. Is this better? Okay, well here's why you should help them. I recently had the opportunity to go to Hawaii and volunteer with the Hawaii Wildlife Fund, helping with their sea turtle conservation efforts. During my time, I learned a lot about sea turtles and the impact that our actions have on them, and I'd like to share some of this with you today. In this presentation, I hope to show you not only how majestic these animals are, but also how they are an integral part of the ecosystem and what you can do to help them. There are two species of sea turtle that make their home in the Hawaiian Islands. The first one is the hawksbill, and the second one is the green. I might like to make a special note of the hawksbill. The hawksbill turtle has a very beautiful shell. In many parts of the world, people still use the shell to make tortoiseshell pattern items and sell them to unknowing tourists as souvenirs. In America, these are usually made of plastic. This activity is illegal, but often not enforced by local law enforcement agencies when a lot of money is to be made. As part of the Hawksbill Recovery Project, I camped on the beach with some other volunteers and watched over Hawksbill nests. And when they hatched, we guided the hatchlings to the ocean. And I'm going to show you a video I took. Uh, I'm sorry for the jittery quality of it because I was more looking at the turtles than at my phone. And never disturb hatchlings or sea turtles in the wild. It's very important not to disrupt the natural process. Hawksbills, generally when they hatch, their shells from tip to tip are about four centimeters. They have to struggle up through a whole foot of sand, crawling on top of each other. And then, once they make it out, they have to hike a thousand feet or more to the ocean. As you watch this, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how endangered sea tur turtles are. It's difficult to estimate historical numbers, but green sea turtles were once so abundant that scientists estimate there were 100 million in the Caribbean Sea alone before Columbus discovered the Cayman Islands in the 1500s. Early sailor records indicate that ships that had lost their way to the Cayman Islands could steer entirely by the noise generated by green turtles swimming there to lay their eggs. At one point, there were less than 100 nesting females in Hawaii. The hawksbill sea turtle is critically endangered. Only one female nests on Maui every year, and there's only an average of 25 nesting females in the entire state. Not only are these little guys adorable, 
they're also important. Why should we care if the hawksbills and the greens go extinct? Well, sea turtles provide a habitat for certain organisms, such as algae and barnacles, to attach to the turtle's shell and travel around the ocean. As the turtles migrate, their passengers consume nutrients and expel waste in different places, which helps nutrient cycling across the globe. Sea turtles also provide a source of food for certain species of fish, who set up cleaning stations that the turtles visit from time to time. The fish eat algae and microorganisms off the turtle. Hawksbill turtles are spongivores, which means that they eat sponges. Sponges compete with corals for space and resources, and it is important that the sponge population is kept in check. Due to their hooked beaks, the hawksbills are able to rip through the prickly outer covering of a sponge, exposing the soft inside to fish and other predators. Green sea turtles help maintain the health of seagrass beds by grazing on the seagrass and preventing overgrowth. If the seagrass beds overgrow, the grass will decompose and provide a habitat for fungi and slime molds to grow. These beds are an important breeding ground for fish and crustaceans. These fish and crustaceans, in turn, act as a food source for other marine life. Sea turtle eggs are important in maintaining beach dunes. Unhatched eggs act as a source of nutrients to the grass that grows in these sandy dunes. The grass provides structural support for the dunes and inhibits erosion. The dunes and the grass together provide a habitat and a source of food to the land animals who live there. Um, why should we spend so much energy and resources on each turtle? Well, each adult female, depending on the species, might produce between five and 10,000 eggs in her lifetime. And males, you know, they never stop producing sperm. <laughs> you know, it's true. <laughs> Scientists estimate that one in 1,000 turtles survive to adulthood. That works out to 50 to 100 potential adults per mother. So you can't think of each individual turtle as one turtle. You have to think of it as 50 to 100 turtles. Each individual matter matters. Plastics are one of the primary pro problems posed to sea turtles. There are thousands of different kinds of plastic. Some can be recycled and some cannot. Plastic was designed never to dissolve, and it was designed well. It can last thousands of years. Now I'm going to show you another video that will demonstrate the magnitude of this. <coughs> don't exactly do it justice. It was one of the most devastating and disgusting things that you could imagine to see in the water. We must have gone through an area about five miles wide that had just garbage strewn everywhere. Um, you know, on the surface you could see plastic floating and just underneath the surface there were plastic bag after plastic bag. I mean, it was just unbelievable. It was just everywhere. And then we reached an area, you know, where we thought we'd seen the worst, and then after that, it was just even, there was even more trash. An area about two miles wide had these trash lines that were maybe up to 30 meters wide that just stretched from horizon to horizon. I mean, it almost looked like floating islands. Countries like the UK use somewhere around 13 billion plastic water bottles a year. Of those, only three billion are recycled. The rest of them end up in landfill, and a lot of people believe, oh, you know, I put my trash in the trash can, it goes in the bin, it goes away. But that's unfortunately not true. A lot of that ends up washing out into the oceans. I mean, the amount of trash that is in, this, in the ocean is just overwhelming. And 90% of that is made up of plastic. There are actually multiple islands like that all throughout the ocean, just floating masses of plastic. Plastics can often be fatal to turtles. They can tear up the digestive tract and block food from entering intestines. This is a green sea turtle found dead on a beach in Hong Kong. All of this plastic was in its stomach and intestines. This is the stomach contents of one green sea turtle found off the coast of Argentina. The turtle kept eating bits of plastic thinking it was food and starved to death. Of particular concern are plastic bags. 
Jellyfish are an important food source for turtles, and in the ocean, plastic bags look a lot like jellyfish. This turtle was found dead in the Philippines. All of these bags were in her body. <coughs> this is an autopsy of an adult green turtle found in Mississippi. A plastic bag is being removed from the turtle's throat. The next image is a little gruesome, but protecting people from the truth never helped anyone. This turtle was found decomposing on a beach. It choked on a plastic bag, drowned, and washed up on shore. Baby sea turtles typically live the earliest years of their life in floating islands of drifting seaweeds called sargassum. <laughs> floating plastics and lost fishing gear are drawn by the currents into the same islands. As young sea turtles eat whatever they can find trying to grow, high occurrences of plastic are often found in the digestive tract of these small sea turtles when they are found dead. Plastic contributes to their mortality too. For baby sea turtles, microbeads are of particular concern. Microbeads are tiny bits of, pl of plastic marketed as exfoliants in personal hygiene products. When you wash off your face wash, the microbeads <coughs> go down the drain, into the sewers, and eventually into the ocean, finding their way into the food chain. I recently went into Walmart. As I was checking out, I told the cashier I didn't need a bag. He looked at me and said, you can just recycle it. <laughs> well, actually, less than 1% of shopping bags are recycled and it costs more to recycle a bag than to produce a new one. There's a harsh economics behind plastic bag recycling. It costs $4,000 to process and recycle one ton of plastic bags, which can then be sold for $32. So I don't know what happens to all the bags in that bin at Walmart that are marked recycling, but they're certainly not recycled. Plastic bags photodegrade. <coughs> Over time, they break down into smaller, more toxic particles. These particles contaminate soils and waterways. As a consequence, they enter the food chain, especially microbeads. This is an image of a plankton, which is an important food source for many marine animals. I used to like sushi until I saw this picture. What goes in the ocean goes in you. So does it really matter what we do in a landlocked state? Actually, it does. 80% of garbage in the ocean comes from inland and only 20% from boats. Just because something goes in the trash doesn't mean it disappears. <coughs> Not all the plastic stays in landfills. We've all seen plastic bags, takeout containers, and water bottles in creeks and on the sidewalk. People litter, things blow out of trash cans and dumpsters, and drop out of garbage trucks here and there. The land and ocean are connected. All rivers lead to the ocean, and they take with them souvenirs of wherever they've been. This map from the Pacific Institute shows the rivers of the United States proportional to the amount of water flowing through them each year. You can see that they're all interconnected. And moreover, Arkansas is right next to a major artery, the Mississippi River. I decided to go on a little field trip to Gordon Long Park, which is on Gregg Avenue. Skull Creek runs through this park. I started out by noticing a trash can in my neighborhood. Look how easily garbage could blow out of this truck as it goes down the street. As I walked, I found garbage behind dumpsters. It probably fell out of the dumpster as the trash truck was lifting up the dumpster and turning it upside down. Now where is this going to go? Then I walked by the drainage ditch that runs alongside the road, which, by the way, is where rainwater collects and flows into Skull Creek. The plastic is a little difficult to see, so I circled it. Then I went down to the creek and saw all these bags. This is another view of the creek. And finally, this sign. This creek flows to Mud Creek, then to Clear Creek, then to the Illinois River. It carries water which runs off from neighborhoods. Please help keep it clean. Sincerely, the city of Fayetteville. But guess what? You can help reduce the amount of plastic in the ocean. Reduce, reuse, and recycle, in that order. Recycle when you can, of course but not everything can be recycled. There's over 1,000 different types of plastic. Styrofoam is recyclable only in some places. Fayetteville is not one of those places. Plastics number one through seven can be recycled, but there's no market for plastics other than number one and number two. Plus, you don't have any guarantee that the city is actually recycling it. Some of you may remember the Fort Smith scandal, where the city was blissfully unaware that all of their recyclables were being trashed. Say no to microbeads. When you go shopping, 
Be careful to choose hygiene items without microbeads. This image shows the amount of microbeads in just one tube of each of these products. Here are some other ways to reduce. Use refillable containers. For example, Starbucks will let you bring in your own cup. McDonald's won't, I asked. You can refill a container of cat litter at PetSmart or Petco. You can buy different fu fu excuse me, foods in bulk at a health food store using your own jar. You can refill laundry detergent, lotion, and bath products at Ozark Natural Foods. Use Tupperware instead of Ziploc bags for short-term storage. And keep some Tupperware in your car for takeout containers when you go out to eat. Use cloth bags when you go shopping. Keep them in your car to help you remember that they are there and that you can use them when you go to the grocery store. Also, buy things in aluminum and glass containers. <coughs> aluminum and glass can be recycled indefinitely. Plastic can be recycled a few times, but it reaches an end point. Let's say you go shopping once a week and use four bags. Using a cloth bag will save 16 bags a month, 192 bags a year. If you go shopping once a week, from age 20 to age 80, that's 11,520 bags in a lifetime. And we all know we use more than four bags some weeks. The U.S. consumes 100 billion plastic bags every year. That's nearly one bag per person per day. Of course, they're not all bad. Plastic bags can be used as trash liners or to pick up dog poop or scoop out the cat box. But there is a difference. <coughs> We've reached the point where people have meddled with the environment so much that human actions are necessary to fix human actions, and it's a good thing that we are here to fight back. There is hope, in fact. The UK has banned microbeads and wash off personal hygiene products.